Welcome back to Tucson, Arizona for the WPH Outdoor Three Wall Icebreaker Challenge. My name is Dave Vincent. This is Icebreaker Number Six: David Fink versus Shorty Ruiz from Tucson, Arizona. We're at Clark Park, and that first serve is just about underway here. Our referee will be Leo Canales Jr. Best two out of three to twenty-one tiebreaker to eleven. Both of these players have an excellent command of the court here at Clark Park, playing multiple games of three-wall handball out here. But Shorty Ruiz, you would think, has the advantage as these courts are much more similar to Venice Beach, a place that he dominated when he played in Southern California. And after a pretty quick side out, Dave Fink gets that first point. And another quick point there, now two to zero. Dave has an excellent serve to either the right side or the left. Really playing around with the hop serve, something he didn't have early in his career, now he does, and the players all respect it. He has a ton of power too. Three to zero. I mean, these are really the type of serves that you look at as a spectator and say, well, those are easy to get back. But then when you get in there and find out one is breaking to the left, the next one comes back into your gut. Third one slides a wall. It's difficult. That's a nice little shovel push, poke fist from Shorty Ruiz for the side out. Shorty is incredibly creative in that handball court. It's one of his big threats. His other big threat is his serve. And there you saw that reverse. You were talking earlier about how great Dave Fink serve is. In fact, you know, logically, the top players in the world all have great serves. Some take it to a different level. Shorty's one of those guys. That ball sent really far out, deep of the court. Shorty unable to get it back to the front wall. Dave Fink forces that side out with excellent use of the roof. Pretty good return of serve there from Ruiz. And Dave Fink right down the middle with his strike. And another point for Dave. You heard the referee, 5-1, to one, game one. Clark Park, Tucson, Arizona. The icebreaker is the world players of handball breaking the ice as we try to get professional handball back. And one pretty easy way of doing it is just go outdoors as we try to follow the guidelines from the CDC, the local city of Tucson, the park and recs, uh, our own rules, making sure the players stay in the bubble and wear their face masks and perform proper hygiene. That's the reason why we're out here. Now we're up to eight to one. You know, it's not a screen serve, but it's one of those as a player when the ball hops as much as it does. Watch this thing where Dave is standing. Is Shorty able to see that? It's such a perfect serve down that right wall. Has a little bit of spin on it, little hook. And as a player, if you don't read that coming out of the hand, even if you do read it coming out of the hand, it's still very difficult to get back. Shorty just looks off right now. 10 to one is the score here. And you can see that Fink is really keeping Ruiz deep in the court. And as I say that, the ball is hit long on the serve. such an effective tool when you go up to the roof like that. A lot of people look at the ceiling as a defensive shot, but out here at Clark Park and other outdoor three-wall courts, you can use it as a offensive weapon. And you'll see both of these players do that today. No doubt, Dave Fink, another point here. 
Game number one. Think doing a pretty good job of keeping Ruiz in the backcourt. Okay, here's a big setup for Shorty, and he puts it in the ground. That is unfortunate for him. That was his door wide open to get Fink out of that server's box. Oh, and another great serve from Dave Fink. This one right near the long line, but in. And it also had a little bit of wrinkle on it. 14th point now for Dave Fink going to 21. This is game number one of the finals of the WPH Icebreaker Challenge number six. They're just going to replay that one. Could have been called unavoidable, I guess. People get offended if you even suggest that it could be called unavoidable. But it was replayed. That ball just jacked out of the stadium. Again, if it isn't already, it should be considered an offensive shot. If you go up to the roof, player can't even get their hand on it. It's no different than a kill shot. Back to the roof again. Way off the court is Ruiz. Fink has a system, though. He pushes you off, and then he goes up and uses those corners. Beautiful little slide shot. That ball actually slides out of his right hand and has a lot of spin on it. Hits the front wall and hops straight down the side wall. Just a little flick from Shorty Ruiz. On a normal day, you'll see about 15 of those. Shorty is quite creative out here, but he just hasn't had a chance to get in the front court to show it to us. That was one of those creative shots that didn't actually flop in for him. And another side out. 17-1 to one in game one. That ball make it? It did. Let's look at this replay. Had a strange bounce off the front wall, overhand spike. It just tips the front wall. <laughs> Unbelievable shot from Ruiz. And another one. This time cracking out on the right, shaking his head. Dave Fink as he walks back to return that serve. Yikes. That ball bounced 20 feet past Shorty Ruiz as it went out after the roof from Dave Fink. And Dave does a little head fake there, has Shorty leaning left. Look at this replay. Looks like he's going to the left. Shorty goes that way. Then the ball not only is far away from Shorty, but also is hooked out of the court away from him, making it even more difficult. For some reason, those balls that come at you like that off the front wall that you try to short hop are much more difficult to do when you're in the court playing than it is watching from the gallery. It's quite effective, though. Second serve here. <laughs> Fink says, stopped it. That was good meaning the only thing good he did in that rally was stop the ball from going off the court. And you saw that excellent use of the roof from Ruiz as he sends a long ball out here. When you see Ruiz get into that game where he's playing nonchalant, it could be quite dangerous. That means that he's either really frustrated with himself and is upset, or he's really comfortable Either way, the results are those type of shots right there. Send you out deep with the serve. Come back with a little flick left to front. 4 to 18 is the score. And look at that shot there from Shorty Ruiz. Overhand flop. This is the best angle. Flip. 
again serving near the deep line. He makes Fink believe that he's going to go for that overhand flop. Fink takes that extra step, gets near the short line, and then he pops it to the roof and gets the point. And Ruiz is rolling right now. <laughs> Unbelievable. So creative. He throws balls up to the front court, spins his hand, makes the ball slide walls. Now you're seeing Ruiz quite comfortable out here and in, for the first time really dominating the front court. There's another one of those overhand flops and another point now for Shorty Ruiz. Watch this. Really loose wrist. Just flips it up there. And now the ninth point. Eight unanswered here for Shorty Ruiz. And what a difference it makes when you dominate the front court. Oh, that was excellent as well. Underhand scoop paddle, re-kill, now 10 to 18. And now you can see why Ruiz is so dangerous. And there's another one to the corner and another point. And you don't see Fink calling any timeouts here. 10 unanswered points from Ruiz and no timeout from Dave Fink. Instead, he'll use that long ball as an opportunity for a small breather. Oh, and he double faults. It was actually a pretty good idea to go right near that short line. Fink thinking deep, but instead double fault. This is an important rally for Ruiz. And he misses it, goes for an overhand flop, and just mishits the ball. And that breaks all of the momentum. 19 to 11, Dave Fink here in game number one with an incredible serve of his own. And there's a pretty good example of that. Ball meets wall where hand supposed to meet that wall. It just didn't work out for Ruiz. And now we're at game point. And Dave Fink does it. Takes Shorty Ruiz here in game number one, 21 to 11. It's the WPH Icebreaker Challenge in Tucson, Arizona, men's finals. This is icebreaker number six. Back for game number two. Fink wins the first one, 21 to 11. He gets the first serve here. And that's a long ball. It's Dave Fink versus Shorty Ruiz. Icebreaker number six, three wall money tournament in Tucson, Arizona. We're at Clark Park. Fink had a nice, what was it, 12 to one lead in game number one before Ruiz outscored him. I believe it was 10 to nine was the outscoring there. And at one point it was a 10 to zero run. So we might see a motivated Ruiz here in game number two. And so far it starts exactly like game number one did. Dave Fink up two to zero. Our referee is Leo Canales. All of the players, the referee entering the bubble following the guidelines as we try to navigate through this pandemic. We're breaking the ice to let others know that you can have pro tournaments if you just do the right things. And Dave Fink gets another ace serve there. And another point on that scoreboard for David Fink, four to zero. That ball was close to being out. You're seeing a lot of these quick points, and that really does help when you're playing outdoor handball. No screen called from the ref.
Dave Fink pretty tough on himself there, even though he has the lead and also one pretty dominant first game there. But that's how you continue to push yourself. Can't get stagnant. I know a lot of players that have gone the opposite way. When they've had success, they just decided not to work out, not to try hard. That was a good shot. Shorty tells Fink that it's a good shot. I mean, when you're 45 to 48 feet back and you're able to pass a guy that's standing in front of you like that, that is takes a lot of power. Very tough to do. There's that inside-out little kill shot that Dave Fink has patented. 7-0 to zero here in game number two. Well, it's about the only thing you can really do, I guess, if you're that far up in the front court. It's either run 5 to 10 feet forward and try to cut that off, or run back 35 feet. And Fink chose the former and was unable to get it. I think the latter wouldn't have worked either. Referee is calling that one over. So frustrating. Shorty Ruiz taking a timeout as Dave Fink is steamrolling. It's the WPH Icebreaker Challenge. We wanted to show people that we could safely hold an event with COVID-19 protocols in place. We allowed a limited number of socially distanced fans while ensuring that the players were distanced themselves as much as possible. We're breaking the ice so you can also do the exact same thing in your city. Ruiz back in the front court. Quite dangerous from there. Went to the roof. Hits it again. Now he does an overhand flop into the corner. Did he get that? Oh my gosh. Let's look at this replay here. I think he leaves his feet. And he does. Overhand into that corner. This is where you're rolling. Fink calls that out. Not quite sure from this angle. And then Shorty hits a, another deep serve double faults he did that in the first game as well at that crucial point after having a 10 to 0 run remember he double faulted after he had all that momentum and it really changed everything and here he finally gets back into the server's box after applying himself for the first big rally of this second game and he does the exact same thing that really did look like a screen serve that time he double faults at that crucial point has to be completely frustrating right now for Ruiz. Good mechanics. Fink hits that deep serve and then comes back with the first strike into the same corner that the serve was hit. Left to front. Yeah, it's a very hard game to play. You're running back. You have to look with all the elements around you. The sun is in your eyes. And you have to try to hit a ball in a way that you don't normally hit it. I mean, I don't even know if you can practice these type of shots. Another great serve from Ruiz. Now he's got his full arsenal out here. The score isn't indicative, but Ruiz gets a point here. It's not indicative of how good he's playing. He's going to the roof and he's being more assertive, but he still finds himself down by 10. I like that shot right there.
Wow. Great shot right there. Long rally between the two. Shorty lets this ball drop, takes a little off of it, goes over the top, keeps the ball down. Tough. Great camera angle right there. Shorty is so good at making you go deep. You have to respect his up front game and then he slides it down the wall. And you can tell just how much this game relies on you being patient and confident and in shape. Shorty Ruiz has all of the shots. He may not be in the best shape, but he has all of the shots. And when he is confident, he is so hard to beat. And the players know this. And that ball was called long. 5-11 to 11 is the score here. First game was 21-11. to 11, And Dave Fink just steamrolled Shorty Ruiz, but it seemed like it was two games in that one. One game of Dave Fink just completely dominating. And the second game inside that first game was Shorty Ruiz's 10-0 run. And another great shot. And it was really those type of shots that Ruiz made in game number one that gave him that 10 to zero run. He's on a six to two run here. And he's really making a conscious effort to push that ball as deep as he can on that serve. Amazing hop and another point now for Ruiz. Really like that shot. Let's look at this on the replay. This is a two-wall pass with a fist. It's just perfectly hit. The ball comes out of his fist and has this strange re reverse rotation. Hits that front wall and darts over to the right wall. Such a smart shot. And that's just classic Shorty Ruiz. And look at the scoreboard now. Once down, 0-9. to nine. Now it's 9 to 11. And then he misses that easy one. The hard ones he makes somehow, and the easy one he misses. Referee Leo Canal is calling this game quite well. He's one of the players in this tournament that entered the bubble. That was a long serve. Second serve coming. Game number two. This is the men's finals of the Icebreaker Challenge in Tucson, Arizona. Actually, this is Icebreaker number six, so that's six tournaments since September and I think there's been about three or four that have been canceled as some of the players didn't follow the safety precautions with COVID-19 so instead of just saying that those players can't play each time it happened just pulled the event to make sure everybody stayed safe Shorty's missed some of these shots at crucial moments, and I know it has to be frustrating. If you're one of the people that are watching these events that we are holding, these icebreaker challenges, and you want to get involved, contact us at info at wphlive.tv. That's info at wphlive.tv, and express your desire to, to play in one of these, and we'll see how we can coordinate it. As Fink goes deep on that serve, comes back with that Really smooth left 
Left hand, left to front kill. And another deep serve. And you're seeing a lot of those. We've only seen, I believe, one short ball. Unbelievable crack out from Shorty Ruiz, a left-handed punch fist that cracks on that right wall. It has to be frustrating. I know as a player when that happens, you don't want to give your opponent anything, but those sloppy ones are frustrating. And another deep serve. Oh, that was a screen, no call from the ref. And this will be a side out. I mean, the players would say, yeah, we, you know, we'll just play those. But technically, that ball probably shouldn't even have made it to the front wall. Should have been called immediately. And another point here for Fink. Pretty smart timeout there from Shorty Ruiz. Game number two, 15 to 9 is the score. First game went to Dave Fink. This is the men's finals. Fink won the first one, 21 to 11. Here, it got within one point after Fink was up 9 to 0. Shorty Ruiz eventually made a comeback and almost tied up Dave Fink before Fink has now had a nice little run himself. Both players are serving deep trying to bait the other player into hitting a weak return where they can then pounce on it with a first strike kill shot in one of the corners. It seems sort of like the system that they're using. Seems pretty effective. Come on, man. Those balls are pretty tough to get back to the front wall in Dave's defense. Man, Shorty Ruiz just does that better than anybody. He makes you believe that you're going to see a ball that's going to be splatted into a corner somewhere, and you're running in as fast as you can, and then all of a sudden the ball goes to the roof and then pops out, and now it's in the back 40. And it's all part of his strategic plan. This icebreaker challenge is held at Clark Park here in Tucson, Arizona. And we don't run a, a full tournament with hundreds of players. It, it starts off with four or five or six players, and uh, it gets whittled down over the, the days as we try to stay safe with COVID-19 and also follow the protocols from the city and the park and rec here at Randolph Center. Try not to have any crowds more than 10 people. Everybody wears face masks when they're not on the court. Players enter the bubble. Oh my goodness. And Fink doesn't even flinch to go get that ball. He just watches it leave the stadium. And Shorty gets another point off of a, another ceiling shot. And once again, right when Shorty has a nice little rally going, he ends up making an unforced error. And he gets it right back, though. Every time! It's a beautiful return of serve from Shorty Ruiz with that punch fist. Starting to get tense here. Ooh, that ball is called deep. Not sure if it was. But you don't see anybody arguing. Pretty automatic right there from that angle is Dave Fink. Shorty Ruiz knew that he was going to go into that corner as well. Just his only hope was that Fink would leave it up. It 
That's an amazing shot from about 45 feet back. Let's see how far he is. That might be closer to like 48, 50 feet back for Shorty Ruiz. As he does an overhand tomahawk chisel fist. I mean, that's a tough shot to convert. Ruiz misses that little flop in the corner and Fink takes advantage. Has to be frustrating right there for Dave Fink. He flips that ball to the front wall, doesn't even make it there. Instead, going over the side wall and into the next court. And it's followed by that unforced error. Shorty getting another point now at 12 to 16 here in game number two. <laughs> just rushed it too much. Again, the system serving that ball deep and then pouncing on that first return of serve and going into a corner somewhere. It's not a bad strategy. I haven't seen anybody try to sneak in one of those balls of the short line yet. The two made contact prior to that shot. Dave Fink stops. Referee gives it to him. Going to have a return of that serve at 16 to 12 here. It's a great overhand, right-handed kill. When I say overhand, I mean he's going over the top of this, and it's above his waist, and yet look how low that ball stays after it slithers out of that front wall. Pretty amazing. And that looks lazy and sloppy, but it's such a great serve from Dave Fink, who's reversing that ball with his left hand, going over the top, and it slides into that left wall. And if you're thinking natural hook as he gets a crack serve right there and another quick point for Dave Fink, but if you're thinking that ball's just going to come straight down the wall and then it hits the sidewall like that, you will look like you're completely foiled. Yeah, that's right. I said foiled and not fooled. I'll admit it. Let's look at that replay here. Watch how smooth this is. Using the walls and the spin of the ball and how he takes it out of his hand to allow that ball to make it to the front wall as he slides it out on that instant replay there. Not sure what he was going for there. Tried to take it out of the air, and it looked like he changed his shot in the middle of it. And there's another one of those flops, and Shorty this time misses it. Come on, make up your mind on what you want to do. It is frustrating sometimes. Outdoor, especially, you have an idea of what you're going to do with your shot, and then at the last moment, you change it. I don't recall ever being so indecisive indoor as I have ever been outdoor. And here we are at match point for Dave Fink. Good serve there to the right with power. And Shorty hits a, another power return serve. Look at this. That was a really good serve. Shorty just did like a power paddle shot there. Thought it was an open... Or I should say I thought it was a fish shot at first, but it looks like it was an open hand. And that ball's called long. Shorty can score points in bunches. He's already proven that today. He just hasn't had enough gas to uh, drive this train completely. And there's the 14th point for Shorty Ruiz. 
And remember, he was down zero to nine to start this. Oh my goodness, and he should have won that rally. It would have been 15 to 20 with him serving. Now he's finding himself here at match point. Fink wins game number one, 21 to 11 serving here, and he does it with an ace and wins this one, 21 to 14. Dave Fink is icebreaker challenge number six champion. Congratulations out to him and Shorty Ruiz, plus those who took part of this amazing event in Tucson at Clark Park. You have a good one. We'll catch you with number seven coming up in April. With WPHlive.tv, I'm Dave Vincent.